All this week, we're taking an in-depth look at the Central 70 project. A Friday night, CDOT will close the raised viaduct on I-70 permanently. When the highway reopens on Monday, drivers will be using a new below-ground section of highway. Traffic expert Jason Luber joins us now, and Jason, drivers have been using that elevated viaduct for more than 55 years. Yeah, it's been a long time, and all that time, people have been driving right over these neighborhoods, and the problem is that they don't know anything about them. The Elyria Swansea neighborhoods have been in North Denver since the 1870s. It was always this working class, very heavy industrial uh, neighborhood from its beginnings. Very hard working, very kind of hard scrabble, really. The area was home to railroads, mining smelters, meat packing plants, and family homes. There was also a cemetery. That was actually one of the only crematoria. It was the only cemetery. There's a, uh, my great grandparents are, bil are buried there. I mean, Riverside Cemetery is, uh, uh, if there's over 70,000 uh, graves there. When I-70 was approved by the federal government, it followed the route of 46th Avenue, cutting right through these neighborhoods. The highway where it currently is, and it, it cut, Swansea in half. Uh, it took out many homes in Elyria and Swansea. It, it, uh, the I-70 and I-25 just quartered, split Globeville into four different neighborhoods um, and, and divided and separated this area of the city off from the rest of Denver. Drew Dutcher, president of the Elyria Swansea Neighborhood Association, says with CDOT adding toll lanes, shoulders, on and off ramps, and frontage roads, they are taking more of the neighborhood away from them. So by the time you get to it, the effective footprint of the highway through these neighborhoods is, is about, about tripled. I don't think you would ask what wealthier neighborhoods to uh, make such a sacrifice for the region. Um, you know, I think that this is, there's, there's a problem of equity with that. It's not really fair. And while Dutcher admits the neighborhood needs more green space and he hopes the new park on top of the tunnel will be nice, he's concerned fans being used to keep air quality good inside the tunnel will blow that bad air out towards the school soccer fields and park being built on top of the tunnel. Young elementary school children with developing lungs playing on top of a highway, you know, and, and part of the the construction is to build giant fans so when the pollution gets too bad inside the tunnel you know they'll blow it out A CDOT says an air quality analysis around the tunnel cover showed that the areas around Swansea Elementary School and the cover would be at or below the national ambient air quality standards. Coming up in our next half an hour, I'm going to show you more of several features of the uh, underground section here. Uh, this is the cap area right here that it looks like it will look like when it's all done. But there's some other cool things that are happening in that tunnel that'll be a little bit tough to see if you're going to be traveling at 55 miles an hour. That's coming up in a bit. Yeah, a lot of attention to detail with this project. Thank you, Jason.